Hey there, this video is a short overview of how to use the VectorCast Test Explorer for VS Code. Once you install the Test Explorer, you'll be able to control the execution of your VectorCast uh, test cases as well as edit test scripts all from within VS Code without opening the VectorCast GUI. Um, once you install it, please look at the readme.md um, file for some important information about making sure your VectorCast installation is configured properly. All right, so let's get going. The VS Code Test Explorer is accessed via this uh, flask icon in the activity bar. And once you've installed the VectorCast extension, you'll get this new button, Configure VectorCast Test Cases. So you just need to click on that, and you'll get a little status down here while the extension is activating itself. And then once activated, you'll be able to right click on a source file in your project explorer and choose uh, create VectorCast test environment. So in my case, I'm gonna choose uh, manager and database to create a test environment for, and then click, uh, click create test environment. Now we store the artifacts for the test environment into a subdirectory of the source files called unit tests. And if you just select uh, OK at that prompt, we'll create that uh, directory for you automatically. And then we'll open this output pane to allow you to see the progress of the environment creation. Once the environment is created, uh, the new environment will be added to the uh, test explorer as a new node. And all of the units that are under test in this test environment and the uh, functions or methods for those units will show up like this. And so now I can go ahead and uh, create a test case. So we'll test place order to get started. And uh, if you've looked at the tutorial before, you know that place order has three uh, parameters. It has table, seat, and order, uh, two integers, and then a structure. So I'll show you how you can easily create a test case uh, using the language sensitive editor for the VectorCast test script. So simply choose the VectorCast context menu and then uh, new test script. And we, we automatically create this template which has all the, uh, the minimum um, script lines in order to create a test case. And all you need to really fill in is the values. So uh, the test script, um, LSE features allow you to easily uh, enter the test script because it'll give you autocomplete um, as you create a particular uh, line in the script. So in, you can see in this case, I'm going to create a uh, value for the parameter of a place order seat, um, and I'll set that to one. And then I could uh, copy paste here, but just to give you a sense of how the autocomplete works, um, we'll just keep going like this. You can see you can type any part of the function name, and it'll give you the anything that matches that. And now I'll uh, set up a value for whoops for uh, the order parameter. And order is actually a structure. So in this case, you see all of the values, um, all the fields in the structure, and you get to choose from those. And then because this is an enumeration, you see all the enumerals. So in this case, I'll choose state. And that's as simple as it is to create a very obviously simple test case. So let's just load that test script into the uh, environment. And you'll get a little status uh, pop up here when the, the load is complete. And then that test case, that new test case test script will show up in the tree. And it's uh, I can just click on execute here. Um, and it's ready to run. So basically, I've set up table one, uh, seat one, and then stake as my entree. So when the test runs, you get the normal VectorCast uh, execution report shown here, the HTML report. And uh, really importantly, we show you the code coverage that's been achieved in these gutter uh, color colorized icons in the gutter. And so obviously the green means covered and the red is uncovered. So you can see I chose a uh, stake as my entree. And so that um, that branch of this switch statement is actually uh, executed here. So it's green. The next feature I'd like to show you is uh, how to uh, debug a test case. So the VS Code Test Explorer has an icon built in for debugging. And if you click on that, you'll get this little status 
pop up here that tells you um, that we're generating uh, the configuration for debugging. So this, um, the way VS Code works is you need a launch configuration to be able to debug. So VectorCast auto, uh, the VectorCast extension automatically creates that for you and adds it to launch.json. Uh, and then once once that's created, you can um, adjust it if you need to. And then once that's created, you'll be able to actually just go ahead and click the debug um, icon again, and the, the debug uh, process will start. So in order to debug, uh, we first need to uh, set up all the input files for the test harness. So we do that during the preparation phase that you saw there. And then we open up the um, actual unit under test code and you can set a breakpoint here and then I'll just hit run um, and it's just your normal debugging. So that's a really cool feature again to be able to debug uh, completely from within um, the VS Code uh, IDE without opening the VectorCast um, GUI. Okay so now we're done debugging so the next thing I'd like to show you is just some of the other syntax that you're able to um, use in the um, test script editor. So if I uh, just go back here and I do uh, vector cast edit test, test script, um, I can just change the name here to uh, place order, uh, I'll call it with uh, stub, for example. And then I'll just, um, you know, all of the syntax is supported. So if I do uh, test dot oops, stub, um, terrible typing here. I can stub database, uh, get table record, for example, and I can test.stub uh, database, um, database dot, uh, update table record, and then I can set a test.value for uh, database dot get table record dot um, data. And you can see that's a pointer, so we actually give you the array or the um, the index uh, terminology uh, syntax. Sorry, and then you um, can just set the check total to say 14 as the initial value, and then test dot value um, oops, test dot expected um, database um, update table record. Again, data uh, check total, and we'll say, I know this is gonna fail, but we'll say that, and then um, load, again, load that test script, and then in, after it loads, you'll see that show up in the script here, and I can run this one. And in a similar way, when the um, test execution completes, you'll see the uh, execution report show up here. And in this case, you see the, the red colorization because uh, the value is actually um, 28, not 14. And so I can easily just um, change this to 28. Um, it's interesting here, note that we get the X status because this test failed. We have a check status because this one passed. And so I'll just reload this one. And then run it again. And this time it should pass. And you can see we get a match this time. So that's pretty much the LSE features. Every single uh, a variant of script syntax is supported by the LSE editor, so it should be really easy uh, and intuitive to use. So the final feature I'll show you is the right-click context menu for environment nodes. So uh, again, we have this vector cast context menu, and from here I can rebuild the environment. So after the source changes, I can use this. I can delete the environment, and I can actually open the environment in the vector cast GUI. Uh, so I have direct access to uh, the VectorCast GUI and all of the functionality of it too, directly from uh, this VS Code extension. And the interesting thing is anything you do here while this environment is open will be reflected. So if I insert a new test case, 
and then I just close the GUI, the tree will reload in that test case that you've created or edited in the VectorCast GUI will be reflected here. So things completely stay in sync. And that's basically it. Uh, hope you enjoy using the extension. <laughs>